So I don't know if you heard this joke recently, but I saw it and I thought it was very, very important. That sometimes we all think about getting married and we get so excited that we rush to the altar. It is a big, big thing. We just go for it and off we go. And then you're married. And it's this long thing that's like a marathon. And if you think about it, you think about what do runners look like when they are getting ready to go on a sprint. They run, they get all pepped up, they look all excited. They put all of this effort out and they still look pretty good at the end. They're a little bit schmitzing, but pretty good. If you've ever seen a marathon or at the end of the marathon, they look like, well, they're dying to get over that finish line they've been running for hours and hours. Well, in many ways, when we think about the energetic infusion of endorphins that flows through our body at the end of a very short sprinting race, that's similar to highs that we can experience in life. They come at us, we're excited, we're even running toward them energetically. We experience that high, that burst, that excitement, and it's like we are breathing in pure oxygen. My God, it's just lovely, it's wonderful, it's exciting, and it's exhilarating. And then we have to go back down from that high, and oh my goodness, the monotonous of life, the chores, the, in your case, Graham, the homework, the taking out of the trash for the Bullington boys, which I've heard you love to do and you are so helpful with your parents at doing. But all of those things that you sit there and you're like, this is the mundane, this is the humdrum, this, for this I am rushing. Well, I wanna point out a story in the Bible that's kind of similar. We see in this week's parasha that Moses and Aaron and the elders are rushing up the mountain and when they get not to the top of the mountain but partially up the mountain, they have a feast, it is glorious, and you wouldn't believe who their guest was. It was God. And you get to, and then the and then the Bible that even describes the sapphire on God's sandals, how beautiful, how fun, what celebratory moment. But then you wouldn't believe what happens. Moses continues on up the mountain for 40 days. Miracle of miracles, the man doesn't eat or drink and has this divinely amazing moment up there that shifts things for us in humanity subsequently. It is so profound. But that profound moment did come like it did rushing up the mountain for that joyous festival or that joyous dinner with God. That moment came, well, after 40 days, of not eating, and after 40 days of not drinking. And I can only imagine what a marathon that must have been for poor Moses. To stand up there, no food and no water, it's a miracle the man even survived. But what I think it really points to is that in many cases, we get so excited for certain things to happen in our life, and we're rushing and we're rushing and we're rushing, then we get so focused on that feeling of goodness that when that feeling of goodness evaporates and we're left with the humdrum, we kind of forget what it's all about. We perhaps feel like the elders of the Jewish community and of Aaron, a letdown. And what did they do when they felt that letdown? They did something, they built an idol. They kind of lost their way and they needed to be reminded after that letdown that God was still there and that life was in fact gonna be okay. They needed to be held in kind, compassionate, loving hands so that they can too experience another high in life, but also not be defeated by life's lows. When I learned more about life's highs and lows from a friend of mine who was an Episcopalian priest, she and I talked at length about what it was like to go up Mount Everest. In the same sense, a lot of climbing, we can imagine all of the preparatory work going up the mountain 
And at a certain point, you can imagine the climbers are thinking, and this is it, this is what I was working for, and up they trudge even further. The height, the experience of being and climbing Mount Everest must be amazing. The prep preparation, the forethought, the engagement of the proper supplies needed to reach that height and that level must have been amazing. But the truth is, is that you cannot live in the height of Mount Everest. Not only is there not enough oxygen up there for you to survive very long, but we can't live in the highs. If all we're doing is focus on the happiness, the number of likes that we have, all of the things that we're striving for and reaching for, but we're failing to focus on the good things that we have in our life, what are we actually doing? We're forgetting that life is not about sprinting to the finish line. Life is not about that moment when you're standing there going, yes, I did it. Life is a lot more about that journey. Life is more about that marathon. Life is, in many ways, those moments where you're just making it over the finish line of that momentary thing going, oh my God, I've done this big thing. Well, I want to look at your parents and tell them that they are about to cross one of those major finish lines, getting you bar mitzvah tomorrow. And then I know that for them and for your whole family, what a buzz this must be, what a high moment. For you to be on this bima, what a joyous thing this time surely is. And may you find again many highs and many moments here, Mr. Graham. But Jewish life is not just about these highs, just like it wasn't for Moses. It was about the journey too. And this is not a stopping point for you in your Jewish journey. This is a high moment of many more to come along the way. After all, you've got confirmation, we've got movies and mitzvahs that I'm working with your brothers, we've got lots of time in the future to continue this Jewish journey of yours. And just like for your parents, this is a Jewish journey. This doesn't mean I don't see you after Shabbos today. This means that I get to see you guys as a collective whole, sometimes on different Shabbos, though maybe not every Shabbos, I understand. But it's also a high, and I absolutely want you to look around for Mount Everest tomorrow, celebrating the high, enjoying it, reveling in it. You worked hard to get to it. For your family too, lots of hard work. So may your highs come soon and again. May your family surround you with sweetness so that your lows aren't quite as low. And may the community that you love continue to also surround you with support so that any low you might experience isn't quite as low. And may this just be one more high point on your Jewish journey. Can you hear on its own? May this be God's will.